This is an overview of an article entitled High Throughput Functional Evaluation of KCNQ1 Decrypts Variants of Unknown Significance, published in the November 2018 issue of Circulation, Genomic, and Precision Medicine. The widespread use of genetic and genomic testing in research and clinical medicine has led to explosive growth in the number of gene variants associated with human diseases and in reference populations. The interpretation of clinical genetic tests is often confounded by variants of unknown significance, or VUS, a term indicating that there are insufficient data to distinguish between disease-causing mutations and benign variants. Several computational tools have been developed to predict which coding sequence variants may be deleterious, but these methods have not been systematically validated, and results from such analyses are deemed to have lower value than experimental evidence for classifying variants in the clinical setting. There's been a recent call for expanded efforts to functionally annotate variants, but not all genes are equally amenable to large-scale functional studies. Human genetic diseases caused by mutations in ion channels, the channelopathies, represent unique opportunities to meet the challenge of variant annotation because well-established in vitro functional assay paradigms exist for these proteins. The standard approach for determining the functional properties of an ion channel variant is cellular electrophysiology using patch clamp recording of heterologously expressed recombinant channels. However, the usual embodiment of this method is tedious and time and labor intensive, making it too low throughput for determining the functional consequences of more than a few variants at a time. One channelopathy that illustrates the challenge of variant classification is the congenital long QT syndrome, or LQTS, an inherited predisposition to sudden cardiac death. Nearly 50% of LQTS cases are associated with genetic variants in KCNQ1 that encodes the voltage-gated potassium channel KV7.1, which complexes with an accessory subunit encoded by KCNE1 to generate the slow-delayed rectifier current essential for normal myocardial repolarization. Further, there are many rare KCNQ1 variants found in population genome sequence databases, some of which have minor allele frequencies lower than the estimated population prevalence of LQTS, such that their possible pathogenicity cannot be ruled out. Accurately discriminating pathogenic KCNQ1 mutations from benign variants has actionable consequences for diagnosis, treatment, prognosis, and family counseling. Functional annotation of KCNQ1 variants would offer strong supporting evidence for variant classification. The authors of the paper under discussion sought to overcome the challenge of determining the function of hundreds of ion channel variants by coupling two advanced technologies, high efficiency cell electroporation and automated planar patch clamp recording. They first implemented a high efficiency cell electroporation method for transiently co-expressing plasmids and coding KCNQ1 and KCNE1 suitable for automated electrophysiology. This figure shows that they were able to reliably co-express the two genes in the vast majority of the cells, Chinese hamster ovary cells. The authors then used an automated dual 384-well planar patch clamp system. The averaged peak current density measured by automated patch clamp was lower than that measured by manual patch clamp, as shown in panel B. However, the averaged whole cell currents normalized to the maximum peep current amplitude exhibited nearly identical gating kinetics measured by the two approaches, as shown in panel D. The authors validated the platform using a training set of 30 disease-associated and non-disease-associated KCNQ1 variants. Assessing both the whole cell current density as shown on the left, and the voltage dependence of activation, as shown on the right, almost all of the disease-associated KCNQ1 variants displayed severe loss of function, whereas most of the non-disease-associated variants displayed normal or near-normal function. 
The authors assessed the time course of deactivation for the variants and identified abnormality for four of the variants, as shown here. Notably, automated measurements were highly concordant with manual measurements, further validating the platform. As shown here, comparisons of the findings obtained with automated patch clamp recording with published and unpublished data generated by manual patch clamp recording revealed a high degree of concordance. Next, the authors used the platform to determine the functional properties of 48 additional KCNQ1 variants that had not been studied previously. These included 16 disease-associated variants, 24 variants of unknown significance, and 8 additional rare variants from the Exome Aggregation Database, or EXAC. The results of the studies are shown here, and additional details on individual variants are available in the online version of the paper. The authors were also able to assess for dominant negative activity of loss-of-function mutants by co-expressing both wild-type and variant KCNQ1 together with KCNE1 in the cells. Many of the tested variants continued to display loss of function when in the presence of wild-type KCNQ1. Finally, the authors assessed the potential impact of their functional data on the classification of KCNQ1 variants. Among the 78 variants investigated in this study, 56 were annotated in the ClinVar database, with assertions regarding the likelihood of pathogenicity ranging from no assertion to pathogenic. Using a conservative reclassification scheme, the authors found that they could reclassify more than 65% of the studied KCNQ1 variants, including almost all of the variants with no previous assertions, as well as many of the variants of unknown significance and those with conflicting interpretations. In conclusion, the authors implemented a strategy for performing high-throughput functional evaluations of ion channel variants with an automated electrophysiological recording platform, demonstrated success of this approach by evaluating 78 KCNQ1 variants, and generated functional data useful for reclassifying more than 65% of the studied KCNQ1 variants. This work has the potential to enable data-driven classification of large numbers of variants and create new opportunities for precision medicine.